Welcome back to How to Get a Dream Internship. This is an event series from Adobe where we chat with special guests about how they are achieving their dream careers. If we're just meeting, I'm your host, Grace Hathaway, and I'm a community engagement specialist here at Adobe. Shout out to everyone in the chat with us. Let us know where you're all tuning in from and feel free to connect with each other and us on LinkedIn. Um, panelists, where are you guys from? I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but I currently live in New York City. And I'm from San Diego. I'm originally from Sacramento, California, but currently I'm living in Eugene, Oregon. Nice. Cool. Well, I'm going to let everyone kind of get in here. Uh, everybody, let us know where you're from, where you're tuning in from. Um, we're going to wait a few minutes to let everyone come in. Oh, Palestine. Wow. Every week we have so many international folks on here. Um, Ontario, Los Angeles, Australia, Vienna, Ohio, not to be confused with the other Vienna, San Diego, South Carolina, San Francisco, India, Athens, Ohio, Miami, Florida, Chicago. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Boston, Aus another Australia. Okay, Australians representing today. New York, Richmond, Virginia, Fort Collins, Colorado. I lived there last summer, Autumn. Michigan, hey, Elizabeth, you're back. Nice to see you. Kentucky, Nashville, New York. Wow, we're all over the place today. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, today, we are joined by Taylor Owens, Jesse Nigel, and Summer McGuckin. These are all amazing students or recent grads that have landed their dream internships or job. We're going to be doing a Q&A session, and then they'll show us some of the really cool projects that they made with Adobe Express. We also have a special challenge for you today, as we do every week. We have an Adobe Express template for you to try out and some fun giveaways. So here's how it works. We're gonna drop a link to the template in the chat. You're gonna to go to the Adobe Express profile pick template. So this week it's profile pick. Um, you can use that template on mobile or desktop. Change it up, personalize it, remix it, and post the project to your LinkedIn profile page as a post. Hashtag Adobe Dream Internship and hashtag Express It. Make sure you use those hashtags. And then drop a link to your post in the chat here by the end of the event. You have to do it by the end of the event to be eligible for the giveaway. The first 25 people to share their post in the chat will get a special code for an Adobe tote bag. We love a good tote moment. And out of that group, three lucky attendees will be randomly selected for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with Summer, Jesse, or Taylor, and a year free of Creative Cloud. We love a good free Creative Cloud subscription. At this time, we can only ship merch inside the US, so sorry, but you'll still have a chance for the Creative Cloud and the mentoring session if you're outside of the US. Um, so while we drop that link in the chat, I am going to show you what I did with the template. So it's going to be the same template that we're dropping in the chat right now. Um, I'm going to show you a demo on how I used it. So take a look. Okay. So I went right in and remixed my template and uploaded my profile picture. There she is. I'm going to crop and shape so I can get my whole head in there. And, um, Y'all know I love to play with color. So the cream and black was not doing it for me. So I played around with some other color palettes. Um, I really like the background of this photo, um, the blues and the purples. So I picked a palette that kind of mirrored that. And um, then I, you can just download it from here. But I took it a step further because I'm an overachiever. So I actually duplicated the page and I made it into an Instagram story size, which is super easy. You can just resize it right there. And then it automatically resizes everything to Instagram story size. So then I'm gonna crop my photo again um, because I have room for it on my Instagram story. And I'm gonna play with the graphics a little bit, switch it up. So I resized that square. I'm gonna duplicate it and make a little box for some text at the top. Um, so just had I just duplicated it and moved that, and then I added some text. I'm going to brag on myself. Check out my new uh, 
headshot. I just got this taken a couple of weeks ago and it is so on brand. Um, gonna change the font size, gonna change my font to something a little cuter and then pick a new color for the font. So I wasn't digging that gray, you couldn't see it very well. Pro tip when you're choosing a font color, um, pick a color that's already in there and then just do a different tone of that color. That way it'll look cohesive. Also, if you're having a hard time reading your letters, you can adjust the space in between the letters or the line spacing and it'll make it more readable. So now I have an Instagram post and an Instagram story that look, you know, like they go together, they're branded together. And it was super easy to create both of them. That's something that I love about create, uh, about Adobe Express is that you can resize graphics super easily. And so if you're just looking for something um, that you wanna post and you wanna do a story, it's really easy to just resize it. Reminder that the link to that template is in the chat. Um, you just have to show us what you made, post about it, um, post on your LinkedIn and drop your post in the chat here. And our mod will send you over a gift after the event and we'll let you know which three of you were selected for the Creative Cloud and the one-on-one. -on -one. So Jada is posting that link in the chat. It should be super easy to find for you. So get started on that while we get started on our Q&A session with our lovely, uh, our lovely folks here. So I'm gonna just start out with an easy one. Um, if you could all introduce yourself, who you are, what you do, and a little bit about yourself. All right, I'll kick us off here. Hi, everyone, my name is Taylor. I graduated from Cornell University this past May and majored in industrial and labor relations and had a minor in communications. I now work at Deloitte in the consulting practice under human capital. Um, and I started in July. I'm really excited to be here with you guys. So ask as many questions so we could get you all the answers to get you guys all set up and ready to go for the summer. Awesome, yes. Um, hi, I'm Summer. I'm currently a senior at San Diego State University studying integrated marketing communications. And I was a solutions consulting intern at Adobe this past summer. I also just recently accepted an offer to return full-time as an associate consultant in the San Francisco office. Very excited about that. My name is Jesse. I am a senior at CSU Chico, where I'm studying business administration with a focus in project management. And just like summer, I was a consulting intern over summer for Adobe and just accepted a returning offer to be an associate consultant in SF. Awesome. Congratulations to you all for landing these awesome jobs. Um, my first question is selfishly my own question that I added to the list, which is what even is consulting anyways? Like I hear this term a lot and I'm like, what are you consulting? What are you consulting on? What is consulting? So tell me more about what consulting is. I'll start again. So my consulting is a little bit different just because I am not attached to a specific company. Deloitte services other brands. So um, the work I do is not for Deloitte. It's for whoever our client is. And basically what it is, is if the client needs help upgrading their technology or finding a new C-suite or they want to find where is the best place for me to open a new storefront, where the people that go in and help them make those decisions and do the market research so that they can, you know, stay on pace with the trends, be ahead of the trends, and then sometimes also help them through sore spots um, when they're either not performing well or they're struggling to meet some of their goals. That was actually a really helpful explanation for me as well. Um, a little bit different at Adobe, but similar concept. Um, I would explain it as when somebody is purchasing an Adobe product, customers purchasing an Adobe product, consulting steps in to help them maximize their investment or meet whatever business goals they have. Um, but I think Jesse actually has a pretty good explanation of this as well. Yeah, um, it is really confusing. I get asked all the time. I still am figuring out what consulting is, but essentially it's a team that works to solve business problems for a client. And at Adobe, they help with implementing products into companies and helping make sure that the product is functioning for what they need as a business. 
So we're there to help assist them in making sure everything's set up and ready to rumble for when they're using the product in their business. That is super helpful. Thank you all so much. Um, so how did you all come across your internships and your jobs? So I came across Deloitte um, while I was in college. Sometimes we would do assignments where we were reading case studies or articles they had written. Um, but in terms of like an employment relationship, I had finished my internship in corporate finance and I knew that's kind of not what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So consulting gave me the flexibility to find an industry that I liked as well as um, finding the type of work that I like. For me, I was involved in the Adobe Student Ambassador Program as a junior and really enjoyed it, had a great time and got super involved. We used to communicate a lot through the Discord and I saw a few webinars being posted when I was looking for internships through Adobe. So I started going to those, trying to network with different people through that and kind of really enjoyed learning about Adobe and the different roles. And from there, I was invited to interview for the solutions consulting role. And then here we are. <laughs> so, so I worked in the Career Center on campus and my mentor there connected me with an alumni who worked at Adobe, but was in sales. So she introduced me to the internship opportunities and I was originally planning on interviewing and pursuing sales. But when I was scrolling through the internship opportunities, I saw that consulting was an option had a vague idea of what it was, but I applied to it anyway and ended up interviewing for both sales and consulting and ended up in consulting. Very cool. Um, and when did you guys know that you wanted to pursue a career in consulting? I don't think I knew it was, this is what I was meant to do, but I knew that just the general structure of consulting of that you're on different projects with different clients for like a finite amount of time and then you switch. I liked that structure um, and that's type of the organizational design that I knew I would do best with. So that's what really also sold me on consulting. I'd say similar to Taylor, it wasn't always the goal for me, but I didn't have one set goal when I started college. I kind of started just taking things one step at a time, trying things that interested me at the time. And when I challenged myself in solutions consulting, it honestly really worked out because I ended up getting put on a really great team of interns, learned a lot, was really challenged throughout the internship in a way that allowed me to grow, which I really loved. And yeah, it made me excited about working in consulting in the future because I also really liked the projects that I had. And just like everyone else, I didn't know I wanted to pursue consulting until I was actually in the internship and learning what consulting was and what it meant to be a consultant. As I said earlier, I was doing a lot of networking and sales because from what my knowledge, it was the best launching point to get really started in a career. And it's what drives most businesses. So I thought that that's a great starting point and maybe one day I'll get to consulting or project management because that was my major. And I was really trying to figure out what can I do with project management. So then when I was in the internship and really sitting there and trying what consulting meant, I learned to really love it. And then it pulled in my love for project management and being able to work on projects and help people too by benefiting the business that I was working with and really feeling like I had a purpose. And so I was definitely learned that I had more of an interest in consulting rather than sales after doing it, but doing both. Interesting. Okay. Lots of different paths to consulting. Um, do you feel like there's anything you did in school that helped you prepare for this career or the internships that you had? I think I made myself a nice little breadcrumb trail throughout my entire college experience because at least with my type of business consulting where the client can be anybody from any industry, um, you kind of need to have a good sense of like how to do analysis and then also just genuine business acumen. So anything that can build up your intuition and decision-making process and communication skills, those are the classes that helped me the most. 
I would say as a marketing major, I mean, I didn't choose marketing thinking I was going to end up in consulting, but there are three main things I think that I did that sort of helped me enjoy the internship and, and get to uh, being the, an associate consultant in the future. I would say, first of all, just trying a diverse range of extracurriculars, just really not forcing myself to only choose ones that aligned with my major, but also other things that interested me like undergraduate research and philanthropy. So things like that, as well as networking very early on. So just trying to make sure I built genuine connections with any project or activity that I did. And with that, you sort of naturally push yourself to try new opportunities outside of school, like webinars or other clubs, any extracurricular outside of the classroom that challenges you. Yeah, and piggybacking off of that, just being really involved in different clubs or organizations on campus and taking positions in those and really maybe working a part-time job in college, just really giving yourself exposure and new experiences in various different things, whether that's in consulting or in sales or something completely different. But the more experience you have and the more things you can have in your back pocket to reference when you need it, the better set up you'll be for when you choose that career, even if that if that's consulting or whatever it might be. That's really good advice. And I feel like we're already headed towards this question. So I'll just ask it now. How do you feel like you stood out when you were applying for these internships and jobs? Um, by the time I applied to Deloitte, I had done internships already. So I definitely think that work experience helped. Um, but I think more specifically, being able to articulate and quantify how you bring value to a team and give specific specific examples of that and how you've done it across different contexts um, really helped me out a lot. Uh, for me partially, I would say being a student ambassador helped me stand out because it was such a great opportunity for me to network uh, to begin with. And then I think submitting my resume through these webinars allowed me to kind of put myself out there when I was doing these extracurricular opportunities. And I don't know, I guess throughout the internship or internship interview process, I just made sure to show genuine enthusiasm for the role and for the work and the company, of course. And I think that is what made me sit out. Mm -hmm. And like Summer said, just besides being involved in campus and my prior job experience, I think it was really the networking that I did prior to and while interviewing, I reached out to tons of people that were working at Adobe, whether they're in consulting, people that were past interns, and just asked to hop on a 30 minute call with them, pick their brain about their experiences and ask for any advice, especially through the interview process of things that I should know, ask them to give me background on Adobe because I had no really idea of what products we had besides Photoshop. So I was a learning experience, but from gaining knowledge from the people that worked at Adobe previously or currently, it really helped set me up. So when I was going into the interviews, I knew what to expect and what they were looking for and just being ready to learn and showing them that I'm motivated, I'm here, I want to learn, I want to soak up everything and showing them the passion. Absolutely. People can definitely tell when you when there's the passion there, for sure. I love um, what hustlers you guys are. You, you really give it your all. Um, tell me what the application was proce process was like for these jobs. Um, so I went through my campus recruiting. We used a website called Handshake. So that's where we would find out about like career fair events, info sessions and things like that. So I just started going to Deloitte info sessions and then I would go on LinkedIn and look for Cornell alumni that were in my college or had similar interests in me that worked at Deloitte. I would just DM them on LinkedIn like, hey, do you want to set up time to chat just like Jesse did? Um, and then I submitted my resume and cover letter, and I think I was offered and accepted the position within three weeks. So the first round interview was like behavioral interviews, the tell me about yourself, how do you work in a team, those types of things. And then we also did case studies, which um, if you are interested in doing um, consulting at like big four or MBB or kind of anything where it's not like a um, 
anything where you're like interacting with the client and solving problems on a wide set of bases, not just pertaining to a particular product. Um, they'll give you kind of like sample examples and you have to come up with a logical solution to the business problem. So I had to do about three of those, but other than that, um, it was a pretty like linear process. Once you started, you did the behavioral, the interviews, and then the offer went out. Uh, for the internship, I went to one of the webinars and then I was invited to interview for Solutions Consul Consulting. From there, it was the general first interview and then there was a recorded case study that we sent in and then we had a live panel portion of the interview. It was a little bit nerve wracking because I had never done anything like that before and it was definitely a format I wasn't used to, but it was a process that ended up preparing me a lot for the internship because the case study that I did to interview was very similar to the work and the projects that we ended up doing as interns. Yeah, I agree with that. I had no idea what I was doing and I'd never done consulting before or really knew what I was supposed to do. So it was like I was learning how to do it while actually trying to do a really good job at it because I really wanted the internship. But like Summer said, there was a webinar that we both attended we applied for the job, we got that first behavioral interview, and then we had to submit a video based on a case. And then there was an intern summit where there was two interviews that day, one behavioral and one based on a different case. So it was a lot, but totally wow. worth it. Yeah, fake it till you make it, baby, you made it. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, if y'all were to start over like this whole process from like the beginning of college even, what would you do first? I think the first thing that I would do first would be just like chill out because you want it all, <laughs> like it all works out in the end. But honestly, kind of like we talked about before, it's, you know, having that genuine and natural like business acumen. So like, paying attention to like what your favorite brands or companies are doing, what they're launching, um, like listening to their podcasts. So many companies have their own podcasts. I didn't know that. So there's a lot of ways to learn about companies and how they operate. And that helps, that helps you when you get to cases um, because you, again, you have more of that intuition and it also just helps you figure out what it is you like, um, which is honestly, very important, but also can sometimes be really hard to do. Definitely. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, one of the things that really helped me, I guess, when I was trying to figure out what I liked was networking. But if I were to do it over again, I would say to start networking, maybe not right around like recruiting season when it's really hectic, everybody is applying, just casually continue to network throughout your college experience and make sure you build those genuine relationships with people because I've actually made some great friends through just reaching out on LinkedIn to somebody I didn't know and it ended up working out in so I would recommend that because you know it just it's to your benefit to get to know new people and hear about their stories as well. Additionally, I think something I would have done had I known I really was going to be applying for a variety of consulting roles specifically, I would sort of brand my resume to say I was a consultant and highlight those experiences that would have made me stand out as a consultant um, instead of just keeping my resume with just anything I had from college at the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And going off of what both Taylor and Summer said, I definitely needed to calm down because I was in such a rush to graduate early and I wanted to just get through it. And that was a strategy mistake. And <laughs> if I would do it again, I would have told myself to calm down and that I wouldn't have had the opportunity to have the internships that I've had if I had graduated early. So I needed to just slow down, smell the, the roses around along the way, enjoy college, and also still just work as hard and get involved in all of that, but just calm down a little bit. And yeah. just like what Summer said, networking, this actually is something that I did that I would just say do. And I would tell myself to do it sooner is just networking with anyone, alum, like Taylor mentioned earlier, just anyone that is in a job that you might be interested or asking to shadow or just really picking someone's brain and learning their experience and how they got there or how they figured out what they wanted to do with their life. 
that really can make you stand out and really help you get a better idea of what interviewing is going to look like and things that you can do prior to applying to make yourself set up, up the best that you can before you're putting your application out there. Yeah, I love that. That's that's really interesting. Um, cool. Are you guys ready to do some demos? I can't wait to see what you've made. Oh, yes. Um, okay, everybody, we are going to take a pause. We're going to take a break from this Q&A. And Summer is going to walk us through how she updated her profile picture. And then Taylor is going to show us how she made a LinkedIn banner. And just a reminder, we still do have that challenge challenge running until the end of this live session. So remember, um, click that link to the template that was in the chat, show us what you made, post on your LinkedIn with the correct hashtags, and then drop your uh, post in the chat here. And we'll send you over your gift after the event and we'll let you know which three of you were selected for the Creative Cloud and the one-on-one. -on -one. All right, Summer, are you ready? Oh yeah, I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so this is Adobe Express. It's very easy to create a new LinkedIn photo because you can remove your background and switch it out for something more fun or more on brand for you. So I wanted to replace the kind of dual background of this photo with something that would match my own branding and my own personality a little better. So very easy to remove that background quickly. And then, oh my God, dragging it. So it's larger and fills up that box. Um, yeah, it's a lot faster to do this in Adobe Express than like Photoshop too. And I've tried both. I really enjoyed it this way. So there are a lot of fun backgrounds you can use too. I personally am a lover of gradients. So I went right for the colored gradients and tried testing out a few of those, trying to see what would work with the lady of my photo or my LinkedIn banner that I currently had. And then here I am replacing that background very easily. And then from there, because I thought, well, I'm already here in Adobe Express, might as well spice it up with something else. Um, I was looking for sparkles specifically because I also really like to add those in my own graphics and branding. So it's very easy to find that in Adobe Express without having to make one of my own. And yeah, here I am adding that. And now I'm also pressing option on my computer to duplicate that. And yeah, just add those around my headshot to decorate it a little bit more since the background is a bit solid. But yeah, this is pretty much how I did that. And easy to, once you're done with all that, export it and switch out your LinkedIn profile picture. And there you go. Amazing. Nice work. I love how simple it is to make something that's like so cute on Adobe Express. It's amazing. It's, it's very easy. Yeah. And next we have Taylor and you made a LinkedIn banner, right? Yes, I did make a LinkedIn banner. So let me okay, show you guys cool. how I did that. All right. So I don't believe in reinventing the wheel. So I took a pre-made banner and cleared it out and put a picture of the New York City skyline because that's where I'm located. I took down the transparency so that it wouldn't interfere with the text that I'm going to put over it. And just like the banner, there are a bunch of presets that you can choose. I'm going for something a little bit more simple. So I'm just going to put my name and the two roles that I wanted to highlight when people first clicked on my profile. So that is human capital analyst and content creator. These are the layers and we're gonna to get to that in a second. But I also put icons of my education and work experience, again, just to provide that snapshot. And a trick here is to do Command G, and that will group several pictures together. And to make this even easier to read, I took a square, and I just stretched it out, changed it to a muted color, and again, took down the transparency. And then I dragged that layer underneath the text so that it would really pop. Um, I'm pretty sure I went back and did a last minute gut check and changed the font so that everything's more aligned and streamlined and you just export it and drag and drop it into LinkedIn. It's super easy and it looks super cute. Nice work. Okay, I'm getting some notes that the stream has um, stopped working for some folks. So um, just if you happen to see this later or you're watching it now and it's going in and out, just know that we're aware of it. and. Um, we will figure out how to make the contest happen. Um, if you weren't able to submit or if something went wrong, um, we will definitely communicate to you 
what the next steps are in that. So don't worry about missing out on the contest or any of this content. Um, cool. So I think we have a couple of audience questions. I'm not sure how many people were able to submit them because it seems like uh, some folks were kicked out or couldn't couldn't come back, but I think we did have a few um, from Elizabeth Mock. If you could give advice to your freshman in university self, what would you say? I know we kind of already covered this one, but we might as well take another stab at it. Yeah, so to switch up the answer, I think for my freshman year self, I wanted to just like follow the path that like all my friends were doing just so it wasn't like as scary to go through the process by myself. But honestly, it's more stressful kind of like going with that herd. So honestly, like once you know that you don't like something, don't force yourself to do it as a career path. Um, it's really just not worth the stress. And there are literally so many job options and jobs that don't even exist yet. So if you don't like something that people typically like there's nothing wrong with you you're literally just fine just take that as a sign to explore other things and you know test the boundaries and really network to see what types of opportunities are out there for you i love that actually taylor thank you that i'm going to <laughs> tell <laughs> to myself as well <laughs> um for my younger self honestly i think i would go i would say just First of all, drive your own career. That's a big one. I mean, when you have the, the coffee chats, make sure you continue those relationships. List the deliverables and things you had an impact on previous jobs or any positive feedback you received. Really step out of your comfort zone and go for those opportunities that will challenge you to grow. I think that would be a big piece of advice. Um, also, something I need to do that I would tell my younger self still is to just take a deep breath. I think this applies to situations when you're overwhelmed, you have so much on your plate and you kind of feel like you're running a mile a minute. Taking a deep breath can help you so that you don't burn out and lose your mind. And also, if you have a moment where you you had a win and you accomplished something you've been wanting to do, taking a deep breath in that situation can also remind yourself like, it's okay to celebrate that. Take a moment to acknowledge that you have done something you've wanted to do. So I think that that is also important. And then, of course, with anything, surrounding yourself with people who challenge you and push you is, is really beneficial. And then doing the same for as many people as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and going off of that, in the internship, what I thought was really cool, which I told Summer all the time, I think, is it was just so unique to be around a bunch of people just as hard hardworking and driven as I was that we all pushed each other to be the best versions of ourselves within the internship and really helped each other grow. So it's really important to surround yourself just around people that are, have, are like minded to you, similar goals to you, even if that's in a different industry, but someone that's equally as driven as you are, I think is really important. Also, always being a sponge and just wanting to soak up and learn as much as you can will really get you far in life. And for me personally, I was super closed off to sales, even though I said earlier I was going to pursue it. I really didn't want to do it. It took a lot of convincing to just be open to the idea of doing sales potentially. So just being open to different roles that might not be your end goal, but knowing that everything is a building block and that'll give you more knowledge about the marketplace than being closed off and only going for one kind of role but having many different experiences is going to make you more diverse and be able to help you later when you're in the role that you're aiming for so just being more open-minded towards different things i think is probably the main thing that's really good advice you guys are so wise i love it um okay uh We've actually uh, reached the end of our question. So audience, if there's anyone still on with us, we're having some uh, technical difficulties with our stream, but there it seems like there's still some folks live. So if you guys have any last minute questions, um, throw them in the chat. 
And um, I'm going to go over the revised contest rules now that we've been having some technical difficulties. So just a reminder, um, we did drop that link to the template in the chat. So you should still be able to see that if you're still here and still viewing us. If you're re-watching, you should be able to see that um, in the chat as well. Um, remix that template. Show us what you made. So remix it and then create a post on LinkedIn. Make sure you use the, these hashtags. Um, let me find them. Hashtag Adobe Dream Internship and hashtag express it. Since we're having technical difficulties, it's really, really important that you use those hashtags because we're that's how we're gonna find your post later since we can't see the chat. So hashtag Adobe Dream Internship and hashtag express it and just post that on LinkedIn. Um, we are extending the contest until the end of the day tomorrow and we will find your posts via those hashtags. So if you don't use the hashtag, we won't be able to find the posts. We're really sorry about these technical difficulties. I think it's a LinkedIn issue. I'm just going to, I'm just going to put the blame on LinkedIn. Um, so the good news is that you have until the end of the day tomorrow to really snazz up that template and make it really cool. Make sure you use those hashtags and we will find you. And if the first 25 people, um, actually everyone, I think everyone who uses those hashtags will get a tote bag because we have lots of totes. So a tote bag for everybody who uses the hashtags, who makes, um, who uses that template. And then again, three people will get a free year of Creative Cloud and um, uh, some mentorship from these three lovely women here. Um, we do have one more question before we go. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Um, Jamie asks, have you ever experienced burnout even when trying to avoid it? And if so, how did you manage to bounce back? That is a great question, especially since um, the big three companies and tech companies are kind of widely known for crazy hours, heavy workloads, et cetera. So have you guys experienced that? Um, yes and no. I think just burnout in general, I think we all get there. Something that I find is helpful, but you know, it still takes a lot of practice is you have to know you're burnt out before you're actually burnt out. So, you know, when it's like the second day, I'm like, okay, like I need to put a hard stop on things. So I find that having just a routine you can do, it doesn't have to be like the most extravagant thing, but like five things you do every morning or like five things you do every night to know that, okay, the day is over. So for me, once I wash my face, like that's it. So like having those cues, just so you, so your body knows like we're shutting it down. Like those are the things you need to protect with like an iron shield. So um, yes, protect your well being. Um, don't period. don't be too busy <laughs> driving that you forgot that you forget to stop for gas. So I'll definitely be using that, Taylor. <laughs> um, okay. As also somebody who has experienced burnout, I think for me it was definitely when I was trying to do all of the extracurriculars, do well in all of my classes, also work, also you know spend time with my friends and family and. I think at a certain point that can be a lot in the semester. So I think taking that time to reset and say, okay, what is the thing that is really bringing me the most joy? What really like am I most passionate about? Finding that thing and spending some time just to focus on that. So for example, I would be involved in a variety of extracurriculars and say, hey, I just need to sit down, mess around in Illustrator or something because I really love graphic design and kind of make something that I just thought was fun because it was cool to click around and create something weird and it wasn't for anything. I didn't show anybody, but it was just something I enjoy doing. So really letting yourself have the time to maybe not necessarily achieve something, but just do something because it brings you joy in the moment is important. Yeah. I love, I love all these answers because they're so, I can relate to them so much. Like washing your face, the day's over, game over, nothing's <laughs> happening. Oh, yeah. but, um, but for me, I know I was doing a thousand things at once, like 
Summer was saying with extracurriculars and school and balancing social life and trying to just be doing great at all of it. And sometimes you just need to turn off everything. You need to put your computer away, turn off your email and just have a moment to be just with yourself or doing something that you love or with friends that you enjoy being around or doing something that does not involve schoolwork or homework or work, just something completely different just to give yourself a break and a way to reset. I think that's just kind of a combination of what both of you guys said. So. Absolutely. But you said it beautifully too, Jesse. <laughs> um, Shout out to John. He said, uh, Summer, you're so good at graphic design. He's also a student oh. ambassador. Hi, John. Thanks, John. Hi, Hi John. <laughs> um, uh, we have someone asking, as a student and intern, did you surround yourself with peers who have similar goals and mindsets? And how did you find friends and peers who do have similar goals and mindsets, if you did? So... I, when it came to like a career kind of perspective, and I did it in high school too, when I was applying to college, if I'm with my friends, like I don't want to talk about job recruiting. Like that was just like a barrier or a boundary I set because one, I'm with my friends, I want to relax. And two, like your strengths are different than mine. And, you know, when it comes to doing a job and the thing about job recruiting is that every year it's different so um and especially with covid like no one knows anything so like getting all worked up about it and stressed about it was truly like just nothing i wanted to bring in my like offline hours so but in terms of just like goals and mindsets it's like do you have a goal like are you willing to put in work for it like that's great. We don't have to be doing, working on the exact same thing to do work together. You know, like if your head's down across the table from me, like that's good enough. It's just finding people that are willing to, you know, make similar sacrifices, but also, you know, keep you whole and not drain you. Very important. I agree. <laughs> For my freshman year when I started college, I would say, you know, I started going into different activities thinking, okay, I'm going to do what interests me, things that challenge me and things that bring me joy, no matter what it is. If it doesn't necessarily align with my major, I'm going to try it, see how it goes. And I think naturally bringing that into any project I did ended up bringing me closer to people who had similar interests to me. And then whenever I was in a position of leadership where I had a team that I was managing or I had people who were counting on me in some way, really just making sure that you're, this is going to sound cheesy, sorry to say it, but <laughs> making sure that you put love into the things you do. I think that you have a role and you're genuinely passionate about it and you genuinely enjoy the people you work with and you want to see them succeed too. That just naturally brings you closer to them. And it's like we were talking about earlier, surrounding yourself mm -hmm. with people who Will support you and lift you up. I feel like I've been very lucky to have found such a community of people who have done that for me at SCSU and with anything I do, I just want to make sure that I'm doing that for them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I same <laughs> to both of you because it's important to have a balance. Like you don't want all your conversations to be like just about work or just about school. And you want to have a life outside of that as well but it's also important to be around people that have goals in life that or that might line up with yours and it might not be the same thing like taylor was saying like they might be going to a different industry or a different field or have a different path but it's important to just make sure that your goals align and that you push each other and you want to see each other exceed, succeed and to meet people i think just getting involved and being in clubs and different sports maybe, or whatever it is that are different classes, you can meet people anywhere. I mean, Summer and I became really close through the internship and I didn't know I was gonna come out with a really close friend through the internship. So you meet people everywhere and just being open to meeting people and connecting on a deep level with them and being able to help try to get them to succeed in their goals and vice versa, I think is really gonna help show that you are interested in them and that you want to be friends with them and you want to help get them to where they want to go. Absolutely. And I found that like, even if it's almost more beneficial to have people who are in a very 
broad variety of Mm -hmm. Uh, fields because you never know like what kind of thinking or what kind of thing that they're doing or working on may trigger an idea in you right it's like if you're all doing the exact same thing there's no room for like creativity or external out input or anything like that um yeah. and you also learn a lot of different things about different industries like one of my really close friends at chico she's in agriculture and so i learned from her a lot about agriculture and where your food comes from and different things about farming and different things that i then come back to business and i'm like okay how can i apply some of those concepts that she's doing there and she's learning about to my job and how exactly. can we help each other out yeah exactly and like like you said, you're in consulting. So you never know who your client's going to be. Like you never mm -hmm. know when this random information about agriculture may help you <laughs> like with an agriculture client, like you never yeah. know where you're going to end up. So yeah. um, that's awesome. And Jamie said, I feel like it's also often the case where you surround yourself with those in the same field, it can lead to a sense of competition and either some may hope for your downfall to get ahead or help each other. So work is scary to talk about with friends for me. I get that, Jamie, that, mm -hmm. that, that's very valid. I hear you. Um, thanks for those lovely answers, y'all. Um, Camille asked a question is more of a technical question. Where did you post the hashtag on the profile? I don't see where to add the text. So you don't have to, you just have to put the the hashtag in your LinkedIn post. Um, so just hashtag it in your LinkedIn post. You don't have to put it in your uh, template that you're remixing. Um, Tiffany Chen said, thanks for doing this. I'm super cool to hear about your experiences. I'm curious how you tackled networking and avoid it feeling transactional. This is, I asked this question for like three years and it took for someone to say like, if you are in a networking situation, people are expecting you to network. They're expecting you to like ask about their career trajectory and like their experiences. So it's not as transactional because they're expecting it. They know why you're there. So that helped make it a lot less awkward for me. And honestly, I find the best networking that I've done is like not related to business. Um, like I just went to a Pilates class with my senior manager yesterday and like that was our networking or our networking is literally just like talking about whatever we're watching on Netflix or Hulu or like whatever. So it's like caring about people's personal lives will take you so far because, you know, people are people outside of their nine to five. So don't forget that. Exactly. Yeah. I, I remember feeling super nervous to reach out to some people who I really admired on LinkedIn because I thought they're so accomplished. They How would they spend time to talk to me and answer all of my silly questions? But I think taking a moment to just say, hey, you know what? The thing that made networking actually less scary for me was thinking, you know, it's just professional friendships. Yeah. I go into it thinking, you know what, let's make a friend. And that way it's it's also, you know, it keeps you in that mindset of, you're not going in to just get some information out of them and and leave, you know, never talk to them again. It's like you go in looking to build a relationship. And just like I was saying with looking to, you know, help and support other people, going into it thinking, okay, how can I help this person in the future? Mm -hmm. Or I don't know, just really going into it genuinely caring about the other person on the other end just forms a good friendship. Mm -hmm. Finding ways to connect with the people you want to network with like looking at their linkedin maybe you grew up in the same area maybe you have a similar connection that you you know from high school or whatever just going in with something that you can connect about i think also really helps for me my primary like place of networking was linkedin messaging so when you connect with someone you can add a message so i'd be like hi my name's jesse i'm a student at chico and i see that you're working in this position i would just love to take 30 minutes of your time just to pick your brain hear about your experiences and usually it would be like a coffee chat on zoom or on a phone call and just spend like prepare some questions so it's not like completely scripted because you want it to flow naturally and be a normal conversation but also go in with like a list of questions that you want to ask them that way it's worth their time and that they're not just sitting there like, okay, what do you want me to tell you? Like you can go in with like, Hey, like I saw you did this. Like, tell me about this. How did you get into this? How did you know that consulting's for you? Just that kind of a thing and going in with 
an idea of what you want to talk about, I think will make it. And then also always following up with the thank you. Like, thank you so much for meeting me. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I appreciate your advice. I'm going to do this, this, and this, and just like giving them a thank you. That way their time is, they know that their time is valued. Yeah. And for additional perspective, Jesse and I met through a coffee chat sure. we had when we were first interns. Oh, we messaged yeah. each other on Slack, and now we're close friends. So, <laughs> so you cool. never know. Yep, I remember stalking Summer's LinkedIn. And like, what can we talk about? I did the same. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh my gosh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I'm not seeing any more audience questions. Uh, I am going to remind y'all one more time, audience, um, we are having technical difficulties with this stream. It seems like the link is broken or something like that. So we are extending our contest, our special challenge until the end of the day tomorrow. Um, so you should see that link to the template in the chat. Um, go to Adobe Express template. It's a profile picture. You can do it on mobile or desktop. Change it up, personalize it. Make sure you hashtag, hashtag Adobe Dream Internship and hashtag Express it. You have to use those stat hashtags so we can find you to give you your tote and to enter you in the giveaway. So you have until tomorrow at the end of the day to post a post with your work and those hashtags and you will get a tote if you use the template so um and the totes are really cute so yeah i do highly it. encourage it yeah. like a good tote bag. Oh, who doesn't love a good tote bag i know taylor was just saying she only has one tote bag and it's a trader joe's tote bag and i was like we're getting you a, a yeah. new tote bag <laughs> Well, I mean, solid first tote bag, Taylor, really. Yeah. That's good one. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just, you know, not the best thing, you know, to bring to all places that are <laughs> Trader Joe's. Yeah. That's, so weird. That's so funny. All right. Uh, I think it's time to wrap up. Thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to chat with us. Um, panelists, we really appreciate you being here, giving your advice, um, telling us about your experiences. Audience, we love your feedback on this event so that we can make them better for you in the future. Um, the link to the survey is on screen. Um, so please take a moment to fill out that post-event survey. And with that said, that wraps it up for this session. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, thanks to Summer, Jesse, and Taylor for joining us this evening. Reminder that you can find the full episodes of past events on our Young Creators YouTube playlist or the Adobe Express YouTube channel. And to find out about upcoming events, you can join our uh, Adobe community, Creative Community that's a tongue twister, Adobe Creative Community Discord server. Um, we, I think we'll put the links in the chat unless our mods have been kicked out, in which case just use a, use a good old Google search to find us. Um, thanks again, uh, Jesse, Taylor, and Summer. We really appreciate you being here and have a great evening, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you, guys. Thank you.